Hi everyone, in this Disney Infinity 3.0 tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the radar marker and what we're going to do is we're going to have objects appear within that little radar map in the bottom uh, left hand corner of the screen so in your stories if you want to guide your users to a particular area or they have to track down a person we're going to show you how in this clip we get those points to appear in the, uh, in the map uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to get a number of objects and pull these into our uh, toy box so the first thing I'm going to bring in first is not this button, but um, a gear. It could be a number of collectibles, and if you go into the gameplay toys, there are quite a few of them, whether they're cups, whether they're bolts, food, plans to the Death Star. In this case, we're going to use these little parts that you'll get from the Force Awakens set. And I'm just going to position them in three locations within my little map. Now I'm making it very easy to find, but use your ones can be underground, in a room, hidden someplace, but these are our three little items hidden. Now in your store you can leave them, so they have to go and find them, they can hunt all over the map, but they may get bored and give up. So what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the location of these three parts by uh, getting them to appear on our little radar map. So the thing we need to bring in next, if we scroll across, where is it? It's very close here, not boss fight. Where is it? There you go, the radar marker. Uh, and sadly, you need a radar marker for each one. So I need three. So if I've got three items, I've got three um, uh, little radar markers I'm going to want. Uh, and also, we're going to have a counter because we want to record how many of those items we found. And when we find our, our amount, it'll then do our next part of our story. And always, I'm going to have two logic gates. One to start the option off, and one to once we've done our objective, where do we go from there so we can have it interactive. So I can go back here and just put a couple of buttons in so I can test it, and then I can change uh, it accordingly to fit with my adventure. So I'll just chuck the two buttons in here for a moment. May not need this second one, but I'll put it in anyway. I don't think you do, but we'll leave it there at the moment. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up these markers to point to the objects that we've got. Okay, but for us to point to those objects, you can't just link the marker to the boxes. You have to have a certain point. And the things that we've used before in other of my uh, tutorials is the locator tool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the locator. And sadly, you can't just point to the box. I'm going to have to sit those above. And depending on where they are, they either fit close or top. They're never exactly in the same spot. So you'll see here I can't get them in different positions. Uh, so that one's because then if you look at this last one, this last one, because it's slightly raised up, fits flush directly to the top of it. So my radar point is going to look slightly different and, and weird, but um, we have a, a thing to show you get around here. Right, so what we're going to do now is tell those markers to point to those uh, locators. So we're going to go onto there, square button, new locator connection, and I'm actually going to connect it to that locator. So that's where I want the marker to appear on that one. Okay. And do the same with the second one. So square button, locator connection. I need you to appear here. So I have to tell the locator where I want it to, to appear. So I'm choosing these particular options. And the third and final one. Okay, we set that across, get to the locator. So that's where I want those locators to appear on the side. So I've now told my markers to go. So what I'm going to do here is, this is the logic gate that starts it all off. So when I put a signal in, uh, it's going to trigger these items off. So therefore, on output of that logic gate, can you activate the marker? So let's do all this option. So square button, new logic connection on output of that signal. And like I say, this logic gate can be used when I walk into a certain area, when I have a conversation like I have done in one of my other clips with Jabba the Heart. So all these allow me to choose how I want to trigger off these markers. And by setting this, like I said, this logic gate up, I only have to then worry about the logic gate. So therefore, if I want to trigger all those items off, all I've got to do now is have a logic that fires that item through. Yeah. Now the other thing I'm doing also is that to test this, every time I run this item, I may have collected those items in the game. So when I press it, 
I'm also doing the item is that when I do an output, can I reset all my markers just in case someone's deleted them before? I may have decided that I wanted them to be hidden to start with, so they all start off broken. So I can reset those. So the logic gate also resets everything, so I haven't got an issue to then go back in case I've clicked those items off. So they're on output. Reset all my components for this adventure. So reset it. Okay. So now the only thing I need to do now is get my button to fire it through into the logic gate to trigger these items off. So let's go back to my button. On press. Can we get the logic gate to work? So input a signal there. Now let's give this a go. So all we've got to do now is press that button and see how uh, collectibles light up on the map. So we send Nick across, make sure we can see the map. We press the button and our collectibles are not highlighted. Our uh, radar markers are, but not on the map where we want them to appear. They're all squashed together. But we've already connected these to the locators. So why didn't they appear? Because although you've connected them to a locator, you still need to tell the settings to say, can you actually make it go to that locator? So you actually have to switch it and say, I'd like you to be at that locator. So I've got to change all these now, properties of each one of these. Go back to the properties of them. Go down, not this toy. Can it be the locator? Okay, we'll look at some other settings in a moment of that. We'll do the third and final one, which is now, if you look at the radar at the bottom as I do the final one, they are now scattered all over the different areas. Yeah, so if I now come out, as you'll see now my map, my blue little markers in the bottom corner of the screen, and the closer I get, the bigger they become on the, on the on symbol. All right, but I've got these blue beams coming up. Yeah. And they're in different locations. Can't even see it on that one because the tree's in the way. But when I take that marker now, look, the marker's still there. It's still highlighted. I've done that job. I've got the piece. So I need to switch the item off. Right, so what we need to do now is we need to do a little bit more work here. So let's reset our, our buttons. Okay, so our markers and everything's back on the screen. So what I'm going to say here is, right, when I've actually collected that particular um, collectible, when it's broken or taken, can I switch off, can I deactivate that marker? Because we've now done the objective for this particular story. So let's go to this marker. When we've, new logic connection, when we've collected or broken the collectible, can we deactivate the number two? And it's also important you see how I've lined up my um, markers so I know which order and sequence they've done. Try and make it easy for yourself to remember where all the parts are. Uh, so I scatter them about and then I'll move them again once I've finished my uh, toy box. So the last one, let's deactivate that particular option. So we've now got that set, so now that when we go do those, they will now uh, disappear off our radar map. Now the last thing I'm going to change here is, I don't like the blue, the blue seems to be a bit dark, so I'm going to change that. And the one I quite like is the yellow arrow. So I'm going to change the properties on there. So if you notice on here, I'm going to change the beacon type and I want it to be a yellow arrow. Okay, so to change this. So go back down to your properties, go to the beacon type. You've either got blue or yellow, you've only got two types, so I'm going to change that to yellow question mark. So now what I've got, I've got those now pointing with yellow radar maps on the screen. And you'll see that. And they do seem to stand out better. I think they're quite clear on the map. If you look when you're going through, the yellow spinning round does look quite good if you're going to make it visible. Yeah? But the radars appear quite clear on screen. So I quite like the yellow ones. That's just preference. You can use the blue if you want. The only thing is the markers are in different locations. That's annoying. So I'm going to go back to the properties again of these. And I'm actually going to say the visibility, I don't want it to be everything. I just want it to be on the radar. 
So this just now says it's only going to appear on the radar option. So I can do the same again on the other option. Change that one, just the radar option again. Once I've changed all these, so you'll now see that when I come off the screen, I've got no blue lights on the screen, but they are still located on my map. Now, the question I've got here is what happens when you collect them? So, in this case, I'm saying is when I've actually broken or collected the item, I also need to make a record of that. So, I'm going to say, can I do my counter? Can I increment that by one? Okay, I need to do the next item. So when I've collected this one, new logic connection. Okay, when it's broken or collected, can I increment that by one? And then the final one, when I collect this one here, so I know I've collected all three, so new logic connection when broken or collected increment that by one okay so we're now so once we've got all three we've done our objective so on here we need to set our targets go to property this box and we set that to counter to be three okay so once we've got all three objects the job's done now we could leave it from this marker but we may have other things happen as well so on three you may want to do other jobs, but the first thing I'm going to say, right, when I'm finished, logic connection, uh, when target is reached, can I go to this logic gate? So I know I have done this stage, so it might be sending my message back to Jabba the Hutt to say, right, you may now do the next question. You've done that objective. So if you look at my Jabba clip, that could be after you've done all three, it goes back to that logic gate and puts a signal. You'll also notice I didn't need that button there. It was, that was a waste of time. But what I am going to do is I'm going to find uh, my toy. I want it to do something. Now I could get a speech bubble to appear. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to get like a, a firework to appear. So in my gameplay toys, and you'll see I've, when you lock so many of them, they're still flipping ages to find them all. But if I keep going across, where is it? There's the party cannon. I'll put the party cannon on here. So what I'll do here is when the story is complete now, which I know is that, that item. So on new logic connection on output i'd like to fire the cannon and let's see how this goes so that logic is now all set so it should be okay to test it but you i always just reset my button just check everything's been done now so we're going to run through call my little backup guy what we're going to do is we're going to just trigger this item off. So I'm just going to press this, collect these items. And you'll notice that these items don't appear that clear. So the radar is quite good. So they fit the environment quite well. You can't actually see that part on top of the uh, tree in there. And the map shows you quite clear that we've got them. Excellent. Our items are all done. We've done our job. We've collected all the clues. And that part of our story is done. Now they're just... Um, radar markers for set pieces for components but radar markers can point to individuals they can point to actors and those actors can move around on the map so where I've got them where you've got to go and find a certain person it may be that you need to find a certain character uh, and you may want a character pinpoint a certain place or have them wandering around so let's put on a, a wise man let's go and put on a um, I don't know let's say Obi-Wan Kenobi so let's get an actor involved so if I get my toys tools back up and I'll load an actor now on here and we'll set a radar marker to point to him. So let's get my filters up, go down to actors, let me find Obi-Wan. Right, so we'll just click him here and drop him anywhere. And if you don't specify an actor, they'll just go wander in the world, do what they need to do. And I can leave him going through, which would be an issue, because I can say, well, actually, he'll just fit in the story. And we only make him activated when we when we need to uh, for that part of the story. So when you've you've collected all the parts or you found the map for Luke Skywalker, go find this particular character. So what I will need to do for this is another logic gate. 
uh, not logic gate, sorry, another radar marker. Sorry, I always get those two mixed up, so I need another radar marker. So in this case here, I'm going to link this one. Instead of linking this to a locator, I'm going to link it to an actor. So I'm going to link it to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, and what I would do here is, um, when you link it through, you could want to have objects either in yellow and uh, pick characters you want to see in uh, blue. So you, there's a distinction between the two. Enemies will always appear in red on your radar, so it's not a bad idea. And I'm only going to show on the radar map. So I'm switching it to be only the actor and on the radar map. Now what I'm going to do is that when I'm going to do my output signal for this option, I'm also going to trigger that item and activate that. So if we now go back to our thing, press our button, we we'll activate it. There we go. Over one Kenobi now becomes highlighted on map. And if it should move around, he'll be there for us to track down and trace. Good to meet you. Well, Nick, that's probably more conversation you're going to get from uh, if he's Luke Skywalker, more, more conversation you'll get out of him. Yeah, typical Jedi, it doesn't say a thing. But there you go. That's how you use your radar markers. I hope you find it of use. Oh, uh, one last thing I haven't shown you actually. Uh, let's just test this. If I click this piece you'll notice the counter's gone to four. That's because when I hit the marker, I forgot to reset the counter. So if I reuse this again, so on that logic gate connection, when I've actually done an output, I need to make sure that that counter is reset so it knows I'm finding all the items again. Almost forgot that one. Whew, that was close. Now that's all the tools you need. I say, I hope you like this clip. I hope you find it used to get your stories going and guide your individuals through. Uh, and I've got a few more clips coming, so uh, I'll keep watching the uh, my channel. Many thanks. See you later, guys. <laughs>